Are you struggling with getting sharp photos? You look on Instagram and then you see all these talented photographers with sharp, crispy looking images and you're wondering, why doesn't mine look like that? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys what I do to get sharp images with my Fujifilm camera. And I'm gonna break it down as simple as I can. We're gonna start with the camera settings and then work our way into adding sharpening in post. There's no magic involved. It's about knowing what you do with your gear. Okay, so let's start off with the, uh, the camera settings, okay? And this is the camera of choice. This is the Fujifilm X-T5 with the XF 35mm f1.4. I've been shooting with it uh, on my travels and I just love it so much. But that's neither here nor there. The general rule for me when it comes to uh, shutter speed is if you want to get a sharp photo, you don't want to go lower than 1 over 2 50th of a second. However, this can change depending on the lenses that you use. For the sake of this video, and uh, we're trying to keep it simple, let's just say you don't want to go as low as 1 over 2 50th of a second, okay? You can go lower if your camera or lens has some sort of uh, stabilization involved. And the reason why I'm telling you not to go any lower than 1 over 2 50th of a second is you want the shutter speed to be fast enough to capture the movement and freeze it without having any motion blur. When motion blur is introduced into the shot, it can make your photo seem as though it's not sharp. So for now, just know that if you're shooting outside in a sunny day, you can crank that shutter speed way up to freeze action and get them sharp. On my Fujifilm X-T5, I've gone as high as 1 over 32 thousandth of a second. I was using an f0.95 lens outside in the bright sunny Algarve. So adjust accordingly to your situation, but don't go any lower than 1 over 2 50th of a second. Another way of giving your image a perceive sharpness and that crispness is not to shoot everything wide open like I mentioned earlier. F0.95 lenses are fun, F1.4 lenses are fun, but you're going to need to learn how to be responsible with that. Not everything needs to be shot wide open. And now take a look at some of some of my shots taken with the XF 23mm f1.4. Uh, that is a 35mm full frame equivalent. Uh, these shots that I took right here are shot at f4. So why did I choose f4 in this scenario? Well, it's because I know that f4 is usually the sweet spot for the most lenses where they start to sharpen up and give us that crispy looking image. It's also the sweet spot where the, the lenses, it's going to be at its peak sharpness of so anywhere from f4 to f8. So just stay right around those ranges if you want uh, the optimal sharpness performance of your lens. So why do we stop down our shots instead of just shooting it wide open? When you shoot wide open, you have a shallower depth of field, a more razor thin plane of field. This means your photos are more at risk of looking soft and looking blurry and not looking as sharp as you would want your image to be. Just think of it this way. When it's super bright outside, you as a human, you guys are squinting your eyes like this. And I'm not trying to be racist. You put all your concentration into seeing what's in front of you. Now, this is the same analogy that you should use when you're stopping it down. Once you stop down just a smidge, aka squinting your eyes, your image will sharpen up and you will see much more of a focus. If you have an F1 1.4 lens, I would stop it down to either f2 to f2.8 to get that extra crispness in your photos. But it doesn't stop there. If you have to combine that with your shutter speed, remember the first rule is don't let your shutter speed go lower than 1 over 2 50th of a second. Take a look at this last shot of Luann right here. You can see that her hair is out and I told her to whip her hair so I can get that uh, motion and action. The action is frozen and it's sharp and there is no motion blur at all. Now this is because of my shutter speed that I used for this photo. This was shot at 1 over 1250th of a second. So combine that shutter speed with my aperture, I definitely got some crispy looking images from this set. Last thing I want you to do is to keep your ISO as low as possible. This is how you can make your images perceived to look sharper and crisper. The higher the noise, the more likely you'll introduce noise, grains, and artifacts into your shot. The more detail is lost, the less sharp your photos will look. So whenever you're shooting outside, what I like to do is to shoot as low as possible in bright sunny conditions. ISO 100 is good. That should be the default. For low light conditions, you know, depending on how much light source you have in low light scenarios, 
I would try to stick anywhere from like ISO 1250 to ISO, uh, ISO 3600 as a general guideline. So the three things that I just taught you in regards to ISO, shutter speed, and aperture is what you call the exposure triangle. But I like to think this exposure triangle is like, like, a, like a balancing scale. This is what I like to... Um, Think of it as in order to get the right exposure you're going to need to determine which you deem is more important point do you want bokeh in your shots do you want to shoot it wide open that means you're getting a lot of light gathering into the lens or do you want to shoot it stop down and from f8 that means that you know you may need to bump up your iso or use a slower shutter speed to allow it more light so these are the things that you as a photographer need to uh come up with right away and you have to make a decision on what it is that you want in your shot. So I highly recommend you guys look into the exposure triangle to learn more about it. And once you learn about the exposure triangle, there's going to be like a light bulb just switch and it'll make taking photos so much easier. <laughs> And finally, the last thing you can do it in order to get your image looking extra crispy is with a sharpening tool in Adobe Lightroom or whatever uh, software you are using. This is the one thing that I like to do when I'm editing my photos through Lightroom. Uh, once I'm happy with the way my photos look, go into the sharpening section and I like to leave the sharpening at Adobe's default, which is 40, but sometimes I would, depending on the lens that I use or if I just wanted to look super super crispy i've had it as high as 60 before so just stay around this amount as a general guideline and from here what i like to do is i go down to the masking section and i would press and hold the alt button and move the sliders around and you're going to see where the where the sharpening starts to happen so the white stuff that you see in the screen right here is what lightroom is telling you is going to be sharpened however you don't want everything to be sharpened because if everything is sharpened then it does not look good and it cancels each other out and it doesn't look sharp at all so what i would like to do is take my slide on the masking section and slide it all the way to plus 70 mark. What I'm telling Adobe to do around here is only sharpen the edges of the subject that you see right now. This is going to give the image that much more of a crisp to it and it just sharpens the edges enough that it gives it a little, little bit of pop. And it's what I like to do as my final finishing touches. So if you do all this correctly, I can guarantee you that you will come away with better looking images and crispier looking images and sharp looking images. There's no magic to this guys. It's just knowing the conditions you're shooting in and knowing what to do with the exposure triangle, your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. And don't forget to add a little bit of sharpening near the end to just finish this off. So if you learned something today, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. That's only if you want to. There's no pressure guys. No, there's no pressure at all. Just And uh, thank you.